Farmers from Central and South America paint Ku Klux Klan figures on the existing border fence between Mexico and the USA. They've come from countries such as Colombia, Haiti and Guatemala to protest against President Donald Trump's plans to divide the two countries with a modernized border wall. They say it will be bad for human rights and trade and will not stop the flow of migrants crossing north to the USA. The intention is to call on governments to understand that building walls is not the solution to migrants. President Trump has already ordered prototypes for a border wall to cover over 3,000 kilometers along the U.S.-Mexico border. U.S. President Donald Trump has arrived in South Korea on the second leg of his five-nation tour of Asia, bringing the leader closer than ever to the front lines of the nuclear standoff between Seoul and its neighbor to the north. Amid heightened tensions with Pyongyang over the secretive communist regime's aggressive weapons program, the White House says that Trump's trip is intended to demonstrate U.S. resolve over his hardline approach to North Korea. But many on the Korean peninsula fear that the outspoken leader's rhetoric could only serve to increase the risk of military conflict between the two countries. While many were on hand to greet him, Trump's arrival on Air Force One at the Osan Air Base outside the South Korean capital came amid popular protests over his bellicose approach to such a sensitive issue. Trump's 24-hour stay in Seoul comes after a visit to Tokyo, where he met Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and said Japan could shoot North Korean missiles out of the sky if it bought the U.S. weaponry needed to do so, a stance Japan has long avoided. While in South Korea, Trump is expected to visit U.S. troops stationed at Camp Humphreys and hold talks with President Moon Jae-in. Friends and supporters and people from the, the release of the so-called Paradise Papers has been used by U.S. media to further tarnish the reputation of the Trump administration. The New York Times has accused U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross of retaining a business relationship with a Russian oligarch under U.S. sanctions and a son-in-law of Russian President Vladimir Putin. The company in question is shipping giant Navigator Holdings, which transports gas for Russian company Sibur. The main shareholders of Sibur are Putin's longtime friend, billionaire Gennady Timchenko and Kirill Shamalov. The U.S. Department of Commerce declared that business relations with Sibur began long before Wilbur Ross joined the board of directors of Navigator Holdings. Sibur is not under U.S. sanctions. On Monday, a consortium of investigative journalists published millions of documents on offshore operations of the world's political, business and artistic elite. Two children are dead and three others seriously hurt after a vehicle crashed into a classroom in Sydney and Australia. Two eight-year-old boys died at the scene of the crash and three girls were taken to hospital with serious injuries. What we're looking at at this stage is that um, we're not looking at that this is an intentional act. It is a crash investigation. It is an active crash investigation. It would be only speculation um, that we believe we know will cause this event at this time. The 52-year-old woman who was driving was not hurt in the crash. She was later charged with dangerous driving. Multiple sources are telling NBC News that federal investigators have enough evidence to bring charges in the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and Flynn's son as part of the Russian election probe. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is reportedly applying pressure on General Flynn after the indictment of Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort. In this scenario, I could imagine Michael Flynn saying, uh, I don't care what happens to me, but I do care very much what happens to my son, so I would like you to apply credit for my cooperation to my son and keep him out of prison. The national security advisor was fired after just 24 days, one of the first to come under scrutiny in the investigation of possible collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. This is serious business. These people are undermining our democracy. And it appears to me that what, the, what Bob Mueller is investigating is whether the president of the United States engaged with a foreign power in order to get where he got. As the president continues his 11-day Asian tour, his defenders say there's a reason Flynn was fired. This gets back to what President Trump has promised all the way during the campaign about pushing back and keeping everything away with special interests and lobbyists 
that has any appearance of a conflict of interest. It's also being revealed that current Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross shares business interests with Vladimir Putin's immediate family, something he failed to clearly disclose before taking the cabinet position. I've heard firsthand how we can work together. Red and white flags of Belarus are carried through the streets of Minsk, a somber parade to honor the thousands executed by the Soviet secret police in the late 1930s. Along with crosses and victims' portraits, they're carried to Kurapati in the capital's suburbs where the victims were buried. For me, Kurapati means our grandfathers, our nation, our face, our sorrow, because innocent people were killed here. Joseph Stalin, who succeeded the Soviet Union's founding father, Vladimir Lenin, started the series of purges that became known as the Great Terror. This is a sacred place for me because my father was shot dead here. I didn't know him. I was born two months after his death. The NKVD, the predecessor to today's FSB, killed hundreds of thousands of people, mainly based on forced confessions obtained through torture to consolidate the authority of Joseph Stalin. Hundreds of migrants sang, danced and cheered as they reached the port of Crotone in southern Italy on an NGO rescue ship. 339 of the migrants were rescued off the coast of Libya over the last few days, while the remaining were transferred onto the vessel from other boats. Riccardo Gatti, head of Proactiva Open Arms, said the migrants were generally in good health. The people we've rescued directly are mostly from Eritrea and have clearly been traveling for a long time. They've spent a long time in Libya, so they show signs of malnourishment and health issues. There's no emergency, but they're quite weary. A further 400 migrants also landed in the port of Salerno, this time rescued by a Spanish ship. Among the migrants, rescuers found the bodies of 26 women who had most likely been murdered. <laughs> Meanwhile, migrants from a detention center in Libya took part in a football tournament aimed at introducing a sense of normality to their lives. Most of the migrants arrived in Tripoli after their boats had been intercepted by Libya's Coast Guard while trying to reach Europe. Dressed in matching jerseys and brand new rubber sole shoes, migrants from Ghana and Ivory Coast took to the pitch in high spirits, waving at their eager spectators. Saudi Arabia's Attorney General has said a great deal of evidence has already been gathered in the biggest anti-corruption crackdown on the country's powerful and wealthy in its modern history. 32-year-old Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has led a purge, resulting in the detention of dozens of politicians, businessmen and a number of senior princes, including billionaire Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. One official told Reuters it was just phase one of the clampdown. <laughs> Saudi stocks wavered after the arrests, but then recovered as the move was seen as strengthening the Crown Prince's authority and his ability to implement economic reforms. This is really about Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, solidifying his power base and at the same time taking out corruption as well. He's showing that no one is above the law, be they billionaire investors, members of the royal family, or even government ministers. This is something, of course, that fits in with his economic agenda here in Saudi Arabia. He's been moving at record speed, taking on the religious establishment, taking on conservatives who say that women shouldn't be allowed to drive. He's also, of course, been really allowing young people Half of the population here, of course, under the age of 25, a real hope for the future. And the bigger question, of course, is whether or not these actions over the last 24 hours are going to scare away foreign investment that the Crown Prince knows he needs to change this country's economy. Venice's miles of canals are what attracts tourists to the city of water in their hordes. However, after a particularly long and heavy rainfall that has drenched Italy over recent days, water levels have been left at their highest in four years. 
The inclement weather caused Venice's aqua alta, or high water, to reach a depth of 127 centimetres, while some parts of Italy woke up to the first snow of the season on Monday. Aqua alta is a natural phenomenon that occurs when especially high tides caused by the moon's gravitational pull coincide with warm winds from the Mediterranean that forces water from the Adriatic into the Venetian lagoon. Televidente Sina nos ha presentado algunas noticias en internacional. Permítanos que el espacio comercial ahora nos venga a noticias en deportivo con colega Carl Reuter.